Aliens, ghosts, the supernatural, conspiracies, a cup of coffee? Welcome to Caffeinated Conspiracies. I'm your host, Glenn. And I'm your host, Omer. We look at the eye-opening, the crazy, the unexplained. Do we give you answers? No. But do we shed some light on the weird and wonderful? Also, no. But we do look at different theories, plausible solutions, and even come up with our own. We aren't experts, ufologists, or scientists, but we are open-minded individuals and have an interest in the unknown. So put us in your pocket, grab a coffee, and let's dive into this week's episode. Embark on an archaeological journey that rewinds time itself. In this episode, we journey to the ancient marvel that is Gobekli Tepe, a site that defies our understanding of history and human ingenuity. Join us as we unravel the enigma of these 12,000-year-old stone pillars, an ancient sanctuary that challenges our notions of civilization's beginnings. So grab a cup of coffee while we explore the depths of Gobekli Tepe. So yes, welcome this, to this. Yes, this week. Oh, man, it's already started. It's well off and away there. This week. Are you, are, do you want to take over? Do you, do you want to take over? I just thought you, that's how you should start it. Like, this week we fall into the hole of Gobekli Tepe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, no. The ploughed well, field of Gobekli Tepe? Well, let's get into it. Let's just say it, it's nice to be back for another episode. Uh, yes, this week we are looking at the mysterious site of Gobekli Tepe. We have no idea what this place is. All I do know is apparently, you may be able to correct me if I'm wrong here, uh, and I don't want anyone to take offence as to why I've asked Omer this, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Gobekli Tepe is Turkish for Belly Hill. Or Pot Belly Hill. Pot Belly Hill. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that bit first off just jumped at me and I was like, I like this place. <laughs> I've got a Pot Belly. I like this place. This this is my new home. Gobekli Tepe is my new home. Um, let's get into it. Every week uh, I ask you, where did your research take you? I know we had a bit of a discussion before we hit record, but yeah, go on. Where, what, what's going on with yours research this week? I feel like I like the idea of Gobekli Tepe because, like, through history, we've, like, been certain that, oh, with carbon dating and all the research we've been able to do, we can map out human evolution and how cultures and everything evolved. And then Gobekli Tepe comes along and tells everyone, you're fucked up. You it's, basically, it's basically gone surprise. <laughs> you know, Think about it again. So it yeah. makes it really exciting in that way. In terms of sort of a conspiracies and like the theories behind it, I don't think I fell down any rabbit holes this week like I have with all the other episodes we've done to this point. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's look at the history of Gebekli Tepe or what we know so far. So it was built around 11,000 to 12,000 years ago in modern day Turkey. Uh, Gebekli Tepe uh, predates writing material, uh, sorry, metal tools and even pottery from what the research I've done has sort of found. So, I mean, that in itself is already fantastic. Because as we said, when we talked about the pyramids, we knew how these were built. Well, in a way. You know, we've we've talked the theories of how they were built. We come up with our own theories. And um, you said that you know they used tools to carry it and move the blocks themselves with hundreds of hours of manpower. Gebekli Tepe is something completely different. It's not built as a pyramid. It's built in circles, and it's not just what they found at the top. They still haven't gone further down to explore it because they know it's going further down into the ground because it's on a hill. Um, basically. The story of how this was found absolutely baffles me. So some farmer was out on his land, goes over a spot. I believe it's the 1980s, 1970s. Um, he goes over and hits something, looks back, doesn't take 80s, any notice. Yeah. Was it the 80s? Yeah. It was, it was the 80s that he first he, found yeah. the first top. Yeah. Well, he hits a rock, thinks nothing of it because he can't see anything. So he carries on plowing his field. On the turn back, he hits it again. So he, you know what? If you you hit it once, it's big rock. Yeah, you hit it once. It's it's you know what? I'll I I won't you know I probably won't ever go come across it again. But when you hit it a second time on the way back up, you're thinking, right? Hang on a minute. I need to see what it is. It is messing up my plow and my field. He yeah. starts sort of like chipping away at all this dirt and comes face to face with the an animal. 
basically. And what's happened is, is when he's uncovered this rock, he's found a carving of an animal. Uh, I believe it was, uh, I can't remember if it's a snake on this one, or if it was, it was a boar, one. or a, uh, a vulture. But basically it was an animal that was carved on this rock. He phoned whoever he needed to phone. He tried to get hold of some people. Turkish National uh, Museum or something like Turkey's, There you go. Like, yeah, uh, they, they, they laughed at him. Team. They laughed at him. There was no, like, no, they, uh, they actually investigated it and they found, what was it? They found flint stone worked tools and they were like oh yeah this is just a grave site don't worry about it yeah exactly so not much really happened now it wasn't until 1994 when uh klaus schmidt uh came to gebekli tepe um and he suspected that the unassuming hill hid an ancient secret and you know what he was correct basically when he started uncovering everything they found these giant limestone rocks that had carvings of creatures on them as well there was like vultures holding skulls and snakes carved into them and you know it's absolutely amazing what they found Lion, and the, yeah exactly there was all sorts you know and if you obviously if you head over to our social media you'll be able to see some of the pictures on there as well which we will upload but it is at this point now believed to be the oldest temple in the world. That's what they believe it is. They believe it's a temple because they found no human remains. They found no living quarters. They found animal bones. And that's it. But obviously they've not explored further down. They can, they've only got so far at the moment. I do believe that the, um, the Syrian war with everything that was going on, sort of caused a lot of rift, and with, uh, I believe it was ISIS and things like that, when they were blowing up certain monuments, they had to literally cover all of Gebekli Tepe in, like, steel to cover it, to protect it. I don't know if that's still the case to this day. I don't know if it's been uncovered. Um, but I do have... I remember seeing pictures of it literally being covered up uh, for the, uh, the preservation of it because they still haven't explored it. And it's been so dangerous to go and explore it that they've only did so much I, I do believe they are back exploring at the moment uh, but like i said i don't know if it's still covered up or not so what uh, so where did your research sort of take you then omar Seems what? It, like everything led down the obvious lines the best thing that i liked about quebec Tepe is like i said at the beginning like we we thought we knew human history as it stood and this yep. was just like haha you're wrong <laughs> which yeah. is the best thing ever um but, like, when you put it into perspective, like, what we thought was, like, ancient works and everything, like, even the pyramids, they were built, what, 25,000 BC? Yeah. 2500 BC. And then when what you said earlier, like, Gebekli Tepe is estimated somewhere between twelve to 900. Yeah. The, uh, so it's, like, it is older than the pyramids... Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, sorry, 12,000, whereas the pyramids were 2,500. Hmm. So it predates them for like 800 years, 8,000 years, sorry. Yeah, because they're saying that this sort of, uh, there was, uh, as we were coming out of the last ice age, um, there's the, I don't know if it's been fully proven or if it's still just a theory that an asteroid hit sort of Greenland and sparked off another sort of mini ice age coming towards the end of that and this apparently predates that so uh, an asteroid hit us and the temperatures sort of went 11 degrees below um at the time of what they already were i mean don't get me wrong we could do with that probably now uh you know the way the, way the world's going i mean this we're, we're here at the moment uh we we, we, we record the reset button yeah we we record in england and uh we are very fortunate we've only had rain and at the moment uh, i know a lot of europe is sort of surrounded by fires at the moment uh, and we you know we, we do pray for them we hope they're okay but like i say we we, we could do with that you know the, the the asteroid hitting and sort of just, just bringing the temperatures down a bit you know for the next couple hundred years that would do us some good that um basically when schmidt turned up and saw this he saw the hill first of all because uh, nothing had been uncovered Nothing had been fat. Nothing had really been explored. Just that little bit. He saw a hill and was like, "Nah, that hill's man-made." I'm sorry, but have you ever looked at a hill and said that hill's man-made? I say this all the time. <laughs> I look at the hill. I'm you like, would. 
Man made that hill. That wasn't nature. That's too perfectly round. Well, the thing is, he said that he looked at him within minutes. He first seen it. He knew he had two choices. Go away and tell nobody or spend the rest of my life working here. What do you think he did? <laughs> I mean, that is some commitment. That is, that he, is he commitment. Up to it. He, that is commitment. And he did live up to it, yeah. Because, like I say, he explored quite a lot. So, um, just a year later, after being getting there first, Schmidt and his team uncovered the megaliths buried in the ground, as we said before. The pillars arranged in circles. Um, some of the pillars boasted complex carvings of beasts, like you said before. Uh, lions, snakes, and scorpions. Even more exciting... Uh, it was soon discovered that the site was between 11,000 and 12,000 years old. Putting it into perspective, Gebekli Tepe existed thousands of years before Stonehenge, which is one of the oldest monoliths that we know of, uh, and also is older than known human writing. I mean, does that put anything like that into perspective for you? Like I said, like it's insanely a long time. Before, like, there is a bigger distance from us to the pyramids being built than there is to the pyramids to go back to Tepe. Yeah. And, like, it's just mind boggling. And when you remember, like, especially that, that bit about it's before steel tools. Exactly. They and you built mean, these intricate at, carvings. Well, not intricate, but they are, like, decent, like, looking carvings of animals with just stone implements i mean there are kids today that are drawing and it's worse than what these people have done with like sticks and kids have crayons and they can trace and it still looks like a pile of crap but i mean that, that's no dig at anyone's children by the way that's just a, a general conception there uh, so i do apologize if i've offended anybody but i mean these people literally carved away with what we can only suggest is either using stone to sort of chisel away at these things or, or wood. wood, but w one documentary that I was watching said it could have been done with water, like high pressured water. Well, how the hell? How they be getting what, we, water? That, that's what I mean. How? How is that possible? I mean, I can understand Somebody having it. Pop back in time with a jet wash and be like, ah, try this out. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get back in time. Oh, what was <laughs> that mean... game that everyone was obsessed with recently? Oh, the Power Wash Simulator. Game. Yeah, yeah, Power just, Wash Simulator, yeah. That that should now have like a Gebekli Tepe DLC. Uh, yeah, I kind of like that. Somebody just goes back and like jet washes and paints all the well, chisels out all the animals. Pe people who listen to this show are expecting something serious. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is definitely not the show for you. We we like to drink our coffee and talk absolute rubbish. Um, but I mean, this bit as well. So Schmidt believed that he's discovered something special and significant with Gebekli Tepe. Um, he believes it's the first human-built holy place, um, but he doesn't know for sure what it is, and we still don't. We have to make... Is this the oldest temple in the world? And if, if so, who were they praying to? Who was their religious god? You know, who was what? I mean, this, like I say, if this predates... The pyramids, Stonehenge, it predates sort of... Egyptian, Greek, all the gods that we are aware of, even the Hindu and the yeah. Buddhist, like, yeah, Buddhist gods. It predates all of them. Exactly. I mean, that's the bit that's fascinating. By I know you said. of years. I mean, I know you said that you didn't really fall down the rabbit hole with this, but that, to me, the fact that it predates most religion, and I've always been a big person to say that religion i believe is a way to control because i believe it's been manufactured this here shows us that it's something completely different now these people whatever they were hunter gatherers or anything along those lines that they believed in something more omnipotent than us than themselves that they had to pray to them now here's where i'm gonna say it this week could it be aliens you know, was Quebec because obviously we we have no way of understanding how this thing was built. The limestone themselves, the quarry is miles away, like yeah, hundreds of miles away. It. They had to cart this, but with very Before little the invention of the wheel. Exactly, this is very little knowledge. So how 
How did they move that? Oh, and this wait, could let me be correct myself. It's before the known invention of the wheel. Exactly. Now, we we've said a few times on the show um, about a race before us, uh, an advanced human civilization before us. Now, is that what this was? Was there an advanced civilization before us that knew how to create? these things without us knowing that I've not left anything behind could we dig further down into Gebekli Tepe and find the evidence of this I mean we know that we from very early on mankind knew to bury their you know their loved ones there's a documentary on Netflix at the moment uh, again not sponsored by Netflix or anything along those lines it's just something I want to put out there I watched it the other day it's about sort of like finding that bit of human evolution of the missing link sort of thing and that they climbed into this cave and that's where they put their dead now we we know that that's roughly what we sort of understand is that even that bit of human evolution wherever these people were, whether they be Neolithic Bronze Age, Pottery Age, or anything along those lines going further back, they obviously had a grasp on religion and a grasp on how to build monoliths and these things and make it look or have a temple to worship in. We've always believed that that came much later on in history. Yeah. So... I mean, I know you didn't go down a rabbit hole, but when I first heard about Gebekli Tepe years ago, it fascinated me. And that is the reason why is the fact that I've been a firm believer that religion's been created to control. And then this comes along. Th these people wouldn't have had much ways of communicating with other people around the world. They would have I had... I disagree. In what way? So you've got to imagine how far back this was. And you're talking before... Like, they are saying there was uh, an Ice Age-like event yeah. happening at the time. So the continents would have looked differently. Yeah. And I couldn't... I, I didn't do enough research to find out when the difference is, but there was a landmass that joined uh, the Americas to the rest of Europe from across yeah. the top. So back then... You could have had somebody travel passing a message from through the family from one end of the world to the other. Okay. I mean, back then, like, Northern Hemisphere was mostly ice. Yeah. Hence the whole Ice, ice Age event. But, like, there was a landmass where they could have walked. They didn't need boats. They didn't need anything special. You could have genuinely walked. Yeah. Would have taken you, like... a. A lifetime but you could have done it okay um so as i've got here in regards to the whole religion side of things so for a long time many scholars believed that the development of organized religion came after the development of agriculture um they assumed that people only began constructing temples and other places of worship after they shed their hunter-gatherer ways but obviously the discovery of gebekli tepe now raised more questions than answers. But, and I think the more that they dig into it, it's just unlocking more questions and we're not getting any answers. There, there are answers to come with Gobekli Tepe. So I feel like some point down the line, we are going to have to do another episode on it at the point that they've release, released more. Yeah. But at the moment, like what we have suggests there must have been a farming community because you're not going to cart like that amount of limestone, carve into it and just leave it in the middle of nowhere if you're a nomadic people. Yeah. If you're a hunter-gatherer, you have no reason to do this. So the people who built it must have had a settlement, must have had a farming community, must have had a workforce with trade because, like, mm -hmm. they would have had to get the limestone from a different part, which you've got to assume because you're in a humans were only in sort of a small habitable area at the time because mm. if they're out of there you're pretty much dead yeah um which means the other tribes or other people around would have wanted to trade with you so they would have taken the tr the limestone from somewhere else because clearly they didn't see a use for it but they're like hey you get we'll give you the limestone you give us food so that's how you can imagine it was put it i think there's been a few sort of wood mock-ups of how they would have lifted the with just basic leverage, no 
no complex yeah. or pulleys or anything or like wheels you could have yeah. lifted the limestones up and carved into it with just wooden implements yeah but it's like you can't say Gebekli Tepe was just made by you know pre pre neo pottery I always forget what that word is neolithic uh, pre neolithic pottery pre pottery neolithic I was anyway but you can't say it was made by them and they just like built it and forgot and one of the bits that I was reading was after the death of Klaus which I think was around. 2014 hmm. um a lot of work on gobekli tepe stopped and then they put up a canopy yeah for tourists can view it but when they dug the poles for the canopy they did find more underneath they haven't dug to that point yet but they <laughs> did find that there were likelihood a settlement yeah so like now you've got to imagine gobekli tepe isn't like as low as we see it it was actually higher up and the settlements were below. Underneath. So the, uh, the the temple was at the top and everybody lived underneath it. Yeah, which is what That's you see really cool. in many, many other civilizations once yeah. they developed, like, you know, a farming community, whatever it's called. Yeah. Like, when you start, like, just settling, like, every one of them, when, you, when you've when you settled, you've, like, thought, hey, a god's got to be giving us all these things. Everywhere around the world... Different civilizations who haven't communicated do the same thing. They build a temple that's taller or bigger and more noticeable than anything else. And that's what Gebekli Tepe must be in the best of theories. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we'll go into some theories, but we're just going to take a very quick break. Yeah, let's bring it back. Gebekli Tepe, older than the oldest wives' tale. Well, I mean, it is. <laughs> it's just one way to put it, isn't it? Um, Which is one of the theories that sort of I had. It wasn't one I could find any sort of thingy on. But it was, was one of your theories. Oh, okay. I have a so, theory on it. What what theories have you seen of what it could be? Like I say, we've we've already talked about it being sort of a you know a, a religious point for a temp- yeah a temple of sort yeah. Um, one of the other ones that I came across was that your, your favourite one, the ancient aliens theory of ancient aliens came, sort of showed it. And because so, some of the pictures aren't what... It, I mean, you could imagine like a child's interpretation of an animal is what you could call them. Yeah. And I don't think, from what I remember, none of the human figures had heads. Yeah. So is that dead people or different people? That's one of the theories that's out there. I mean, um, one of one of the guys that I'm, I'm, I follow, and you know, I, I think I want to try and get him on the show. Uh, George L. Uh you may know him as the Aliens Guy meme. Uh, big fan of my favorite band. Uh, spotted him on some of the convention stuff and uh, mentioned the band uh, Marillion. Obviously, not the one that I'm promoting here at the moment, but um, you know he's talked about it as well you know the whole asian aliens sort of theory to it as well uh, and it can also be seen in the book chariots of the gods um by eric von Brannigan, uh which is a fantastic book and it talks about the asian aliens theory um obviously i know bits of it have been very much discredited but at the end of the day, it is a fantastic read, so I do recommend it. Uh, looking at the Asian alien theory, that we look at these, uh, you know, these structures, the the pyramids, Gebekli Tepe, Stonehenge, and we think about how heavy they are. And even in today's society uh, and today's world with our technology now, it still proves quite difficult to build these things. In no way, shape, or form, am I saying that. Humans back then couldn't do it because they weren't smart enough. They, you know, they didn't have the, you know, the, the means. If there's a, if there's a will, there's a way. That's, you know, it's one of the most popular sayings. If there's a will, there's a way. And I well and truly believe that if it wasn't uh, anybody coming down to show us how to do this, it, if it wasn't like um, a civilization beforehand, uh, the precursors to the human race, then. If they if they didn't show us how to do it, then it must have been that human evolution. They got to a point where they thought, you know, we need to build this. You know, there's a reason for us to build this. Maybe some guy was drunk one night and just decided to just draw circles and 
some sticks in it and that's how it turned out and the next minute everyone followed him we uh, it's uh, we as a human race unfortunately are sheep <laughs> you know we have leaders that we follow blindly there are people that follow uh, religious sex blindly you know oh. and back then there was nobody to tell us otherwise you know that the the man who spouted this there was no one else to tell us otherwise we're going to follow him because he's or her should i say they're spouting this that we're going to build this because they want us to let's do oh, no, it no no given given what's on gobekli tepe i do feel like it was patriarchal because yeah one of the things they did find is all the animals were male oh there you go then all the carvings it's... of the animals were male None of the females were there, so it's, it does suggest a patriarchal system. Now, on the flip side of that, there's the theory that Gebekli Tepe is technically the Garden of Eden. Okay. Okay. Now, I didn't go too much into this because I just thought the fact that this is the Garden of Eden because of where it is in the world uh, because it was found as part of Mesopotamia and you know that's where we believe that everything sort of originated from that area you know I mean you've I mean it holds ground when like I mentioned earlier that like at that point on earth there was only a small habitable area given how the earth was changing yeah so if you call that Garden of Eden and if Garden of Eden was on earth it would be Gebekli Tepe. Yeah. Or in that region, at least, because like around Gebekli Tepe, they have found other sites with similar structures. Yeah. See, you're smaller. getting into it now. You're getting into it. When you started like this I episode, say, you were like, uh, you, you, you're intrigued. I know you are. I, I see like it. Say, I'm, I'm intrigued in the historical facts of it more than <laughs> the fun fiction that I get from the other stuff. Yeah, I, I know what you enjoy mean. Enjoy the fiction. Um, there's still. I, I mean, uh, there's so much as well. Another one was that it's an, um, much like they do believe with the pyramids as well, and Stonehenge, it is uh, an ancient observatory to sort of yep. monitor the stars and the night sky because we know that the pyramids line up with it. We know that when we get the, um, what are they called? I forgot what they're called. Longest day of the year and the shortest day of the year. Solstice. The, yes, that's it. When we get like the sol solstice and the equinox and things like that, they perfectly line up with Stonehenge. We know that. We've seen it multiple times. We see videos of it on the longest day and on the shortest day because of where the sun lines up perfectly with Stonehenge. Gebekli Tepe, you can see certain constellations perfectly from there so is that what it was built for to monitor the sky and is every structure we've ever built is that us trying to make our way to the stars i mean gebeko tepe did it the wrong way around they went downwards but is or is it a way for us to be able to sort of map out constellations and is that what gebeko tepe was the further down it goes will it line up with other star constellations from that time of when that. it was built well, that's one of the theories. And, I mean, this it's, it's... one, this one, I liked the most. Okay, but I did also see a theory that disproved it because okay. I just want to break, throw the dis, di, the sort of disbelief one in first. Yeah, the, the dis, disproving one because uh, it was like so. This the astrological symbols as we know them, mostly taken from Greek history. They thought the Big Dipper was a bear. Yeah. Now, if you've ever seen the Big Dipper, it literally looks like a pan ha a pan with a handle. But and obviously, the interpreted that as a bear. But back then, there really wasn't pans the way we have pans now. <laughs> yeah, but they, they, how even the pans that they ha we have now, right? Yeah, they don't look like bears. <laughs> It's Ursa Major, so it's like, <laughs> it's, it's the what, bear. What pans are you using? <laughs> so for an uh, older, much, much way older civilization to look at the stars and see them the same way is a bit impossible. Yeah. you got to imagine. So they look at those same stars. They would have seen that same panhandle that we see as Ursa Major. And they would have interpreted something totally different i yeah. don't know may maybe uh, 
pelican or maybe a giraffe they would have thought that would fit into. But they would have saw that differently. So the animals on it should yeah. be vastly different to what we understand the constellations to be. Because we're still going off like the Greek and like pre-pagan sort of ideas of what the stars sort of make. We didn't make our, any new ones. We just went off the old ones. Yeah. So the, the, the 12 constellations that everyone used for, what's it called? A, no, what's that stupid thing? I shouldn't say that. Um <laughs> star signs the 12 yeah. star signs that everyone has like the way the stars shape none of them look like what they they say they do so an older civilization would have had totally different symbols maybe they didn't even have animals for it maybe they used something else like plant or like other people so like to say it was a star chart was like disproven in that way because we don't quite understand what they would have seen the stars as which yeah. led into what my theory about it was. Okay. Is I, I like the idea that... So the Ice Age event that sort of made it loose, because they say an Ice Age event happened, and it has been sort of recorded via carbon dating that like Ice Age did happen around that era. Yeah. So let's say Quebecle Tepe is the peak of human civilization at that time. So if you imagine that, like they would have understood the stars differently. My theory comes yep. as, let's say we were advancing. We did settle. We did create uh, a landed sort of civilization where we're farming. We've settled in one place. We've built a religion because that's what we do after. Yeah. These are the creatures that the religion sort of follows because where did everything come from? You've got animals we're eating. Let's respect the animals. It was a more of a Native American and a lot of other cultures sort of respected the animals that they were eating. Okay. Uh, you gave life to us. We now praise you. It's why yeah. it also explained why you found animal bones at Gobekli Tepe. Yeah. Because after that they did like consumed it, they'd be like, here's the, the skull or like head in honor. Yeah. Um and it would also explain why men in the carving didn't have heads because we were respecting the animals not the humans um so when you said precursors earlier so let's say that was the peak of human and civilization and that was the precursor we got so far okay ice age happens scatters us we forget some of that technology that we used and we start scattering across the globe and we're starting from dot again because no one remembers because there was nothing written no way to share that except verbal knowledge so okay. everything Passed down from word of mouth. Everyone knows the Chinese whisper effect. It all yeah. changes. So if yeah. you look at Gabegle Tepe's animals mm -hmm. as the precursors to, let's say, the gods of Egypt. Okay, yeah, yeah. The precursors to the Hindu gods. Yep. And then it all makes sense because, like, a lot of religions around the world, like early religions, mm. had animal-based gods. Yep. And Gabegle Tepe has just pillars of animals of animals yeah makes sense you so what, they, yeah. they are the precursors they collapsed they didn't get as far as we did in modern day but they did get quite advanced for their time they yeah. collapsed due to just the way the earth worked they didn't have a way to record it and share it so no one knows they kind of faded but memories of them stayed and that's why other religions have multiple gods and things because Quebec okay. Tepe was the precursor they weren't like one of the theories that i came across was there there was a pre-advanced civilization with you know the atlantis theory which we'll cover another time yep. there was a precursor civilization that was like way advanced than we are today yep i don't think that's the case i think they did get advanced enough to build civilization and then it collapsed due to the way the world was changing and it's just forgotten yeah so they are just the reset point okay um the one question I need to sort of ask, though, and it's not one that's usually asked a lot. Why was Gebekli Tepe covered? Is there any particular reason? Was it just because it had been forgotten, been abandoned, as we know places do, and nature just took over? Or was it abandoned and buried for a reason? Was it abandoned and buried or submerged and forgotten? By submerged, uh, I don't mean by, by yeah, water, yeah. I mean just by the earth, so it just sunk in. I mean, 
I'd like to know because from the like I say from the pictures and the the stones and the temples, it was beautiful, and I can only imagine what it looked like back in the day. You know when it was originally there, when it was being built, or even when just I would just love to know what it was like there as it was preconceived and to build this thing. And somebody's gone, let's build it. Let's who's who's told me to build? Why am I building it? You know. We wake up every day and we go, why do we have to go to work? Oh, yeah, I need to go to work because I need money to feed my family, to put my lights on, to eat, to all that. You know, we have we have a, a reason to get up and go. What was their reason to build this? Where did the preconceived notion of building something like this come from? And what made them abandon it for it to be taken back by nature? Wasn't that wasn't there? Because one of the theories of Gebekli Tepe was there was one of the carvings that depicted a falling rock, basically. So uh, a small meteor, uh, meteor come hit Earth, caused that second ice age or yep. ice age like event. Well, um, there's the there's the carving of the vulture with like a, a human. Yeah, it's a vulture with like a human skull. Uh, and basically mm. they believed in well the saying that a lot of religion at around about that time. Well probably after that period of what we known to be the earliest religions. Um, they believed in a land of sky where vultures would take us up to the sky. And that's why we see the vulture with the skull. Now, they're saying, did they uh, preempt this second this asteroid that created the, the other mini uh, ice age? If so... How did they predict it? How did they know it was coming? Could, could it be that it was an observatory and they've seen the rock falling? Because the, a star might have got closer and closer and closer if somebody was smart enough to map out the stars in a way. But where, where's the writings? But then again, what were they writing on? Were they writing at all? Were they, the were they writing at all? Got is the stone carvings. Is the carvings. So are they carving like the notches? Do they mean something? Do certain animals mean something? As we said with the Egyptians, they use hieroglyphics. I can't even say the word. Hieroglyphics. There we go. Thank you. Um, just like you can't say ufologist. I can't say that. No, even uh, attempt it. Exactly. So could it have been that they were using that type to, that, that to communicate? Is that how they did it? And did they leave there because they believe that it is coming to an end? You know, that star has got closer and closer and closer every day for the past 10 years. Could it be that it's going to hit us? We need to go because we don't know what's here. That's on our tra trajectory. Um, let's leave. And is that why they left? And then, as I say, nature just took over and took it back. These are all the things that I think as they explore more of Gebekli Tepe that they will discover it and they will find the true meaning of it. I mean, I hope they do. We say it every week that there are some things that we want to know, some things that we don't want to know. This is one of the mysteries that I really want to know because Gebekli Tepe has fascinated me that the fact that they found it on some random farm, they've dug it and found so much that predates the pyramids, predates Stonehenge, and... I mean, what else? Are we going to dig deeper and find things that predate even Gebekli Tepe? I'll, you know, they, they, let's face it. There is so much of Earth's history we don't know. Because it's before writing. And even when writing began, not a lot of that writing survived or is translatable. So much we don't know. Exactly. There's there's no Rosetta history. there's no Rosetta Stone to show us what their what their meanings are. You know what they've sort of chiseled onto the walls it doesn't tell me anything you know <laughs> so i mean i think we just have to live with the theories and the 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 explanations that we're given that it's a temple made by hunter gatherers they built this thing using stone and wood not water because there's no way they got a jet wash um the, no, unless... no, they were all doing it with their hands they were just squeezing the water together like <laughs> <laughs> you've done you've done that in the bathtub before <laughs> yeah exactly but i mean that's what's fascinating is if it the fact that it predates what we know of human civilization and us building mega structures like this 
it's fascinating. And I know for you that, you know, you just see it as like looking at the surface of this is it. This is what it was. This is probably what it was for. Here it is. But like you say, until we dig further in and we explore more, we just won't know. I like the mysteries and the theories. I don't think many come up from this one besides the ones we've talked about. But the one thing I do know, that if anyone builds a time machine, that's where they need to plant it. Yes. You know you're safe for at least 10,000 years. You pull that lever, go back in time. Unless your time machine also travels in space, then sure, do go put it where you want. But if you ain't got one that travels through space, Quebec Le Tepe, you know you're safe for at least 10,000 years. Exactly. Um, but I think there we're going to... I think it's a good place to sort of wrap up for now because... There is still so much we don't know about Gobekli Tepe. And if more information comes out uh, and we're still around and we're still doing these episodes, you can guarantee there will be another episode on it and we can discuss it and we can look at more. Or even if you've got any theories about it and you want to get in touch, let us know. We can always do a bonus episode where we just come on and talk all your theories and everything else. And, I mean, follow us on Facebook twitter now x or whatever it's called these days instagram threads we're on all the social media you can find us on tiktok comment on those let us know your theories and get in touch with us because we want to interact with you guys as much as we can so if you have theories or you even know of any conspiracies that you wanted us to look at even whether it be a supernatural story as well ghost stories season two as we are sort of narrowing down what we're doing for our second season i can tell you now it is very much supernatural very much ghost stories and yeah, we, haven't and wonderful. we haven't hit a lot of supernatural on our first season but folks if that's what you've come for you're going to be getting it with our second season um at, I mean, at the time of recording, hopefully you are listening to our episodes as they launch each week and you're really enjoying the show. We are slowly coming to the end of our first season. Um, so, I mean, I've loved it so far. I hope you guys are loving it. But, you know, you can let us know just by hitting that like button, giving us five stars wherever you listen to the show. It really does help us. Um, and if anyone wants to take a challenge, show me how to do stone etching with wood implements. Yes. Yes, and if you know how they did it with water back then, let us know, because, <laughs> you know, I'd love to know, because <laughs> I think it is be fascinating. Um, well, I don't know about you, but I'm out of coffee. Have we given you answers? Have we left you with more questions than you came in with? You can let us know on all our socials. Links are in the description, but be sure to leave us a great review to please the overlords. You can find all our episodes wherever you listen to podcasts. Make sure you tune in next week when we have a fresh pot of coffee, some more crazy theories. But for now, I've been Glenn. And I've been Omer. See you next time on Caffeinated Conspiracies.